Call this regional council meeting to order. Please be advised that tonight's meeting is available for the public to attend virtually, is being streamed and recorded. Should virtual attendees wish to address council during either the public comment period or the question and answer period, use the raise hands feature on your webinar controls. When it's your turn and are prompted, unmute your microphone, state your name, ask your question. Once your question has ended, you will be muted again. Are there any council additions? Very well. Um, I'm requesting to amend the order of the agenda to allow for uh, Roshan Nelson uh, as a delegation speaking to the request to rename the Rotary Spray Park. Uh, any CAO additions? Yes, Mayor, uh, locum housing. Okay. Can I get a motion please to adopt that agenda as amended? Moved by Councillor Andrew, seconded by Councillor Roper. All those in favor, carried. Can I get a motion please to adopt the minutes of the Special Regional Council meeting of August 9th? Special Regional Council meeting of August 9th. Regional Council meeting of August 9th. Special Regional Council of September 10th. Special Regional Council of September 13th. Councillor Gerwing. Uh, there's an error um, on September 13th minutes. Um, I was attending via um, video conference and it's not listed that way. It also um, lists Councillor Dolan as attending and I don't think that she was there. Very well. Um, staff make those changes then. Thank you. And can I get a motion to adopt those minutes as amended? Moved by Councillor Andrews, seconded by Councillor Gerwing, all those in favor? Carried. Are there any virtual attendees who wish to comment on tonight's agenda? No, thank you. Roshan, request to rename the Rotary Spray Park, the Katie June Be Kind Rotary Spray Park. Would you like to proceed with your presentation, please? Yes, uh, good evening, uh, Regional Council. I see a lot of familiar faces and I uh, just wanted to say hello to the ones I haven't met yet. My name is Roshan Nelson. I'm uh, one of the Nelson kids uh, that grew up and been born and raised here. Um, Katie June was my great niece um, and I'm representing our family as well as friends um, for this request. Origin, um, I was here for Katie June's birthday on August 20th that week. Um, it was uh, a month after she had passed away. So we all come home and we were talking about, actually I was talking about another issue. It was um, wanting to rename Hospital Hill after Dr. Kenyon. I thought, you know, oftentimes the things are always posthumous and it would be great to recognize a man of his stature while he's, you know, with us and, and can speak to us. So I was mentioning it to my family and, and my sister said, wouldn't it be a beautiful thing if we could um, name the spray park after Katie and the light bulb just went off and and so we got the support we thought about it we looked at it as a legacy uh, for the community um, where the spirit of that little girl could bring things together on her birthday on the 20th of September or 20th of August have a place where people can have free hot dogs and some fruitopia and get together and and do it for the kids um, in that spirit of generosity and, and uh, bringing people together as she did the be yourself was uh, um, part of some art that she was doing while in the hospital and she drew an image of the little bee and the key part of that was the spirit of it that um, it was unconditional that you know people could be themselves and it was a wonderful message for children um, it was fun it was you know something that could be reflective in the colors of that spray park um, but most importantly uh, being respectful of all of the efforts of the Rotary Club was a huge priority for us we knew what it meant. We knew all of the members and what they do and the contributions. We didn't want that this to take from that. We wanted to add to it, you know, be contributory and respectful. So we talked to them, we got a letter of support from them, which we forwarded off to um, Jaylene. And that was also key. We wanted to ensure that that legacy also continued and whatever works we did was with them, you know, in support and collaboration. So that's how we, we came about it. Um, Katie June herself uh, was just a 
you know, 11 year old girl, little Port Nelson that grew up here and, and uh, loved the spray park, loved playing in the water, um, loved having birthdays there, that kind of thing. So it was a natural uh, alignment to that um, and something that we could rally behind, you know, and bring together and have a youth board member that could also contribute to this foundation approach where it was um, not just a one and done type of thing, you know, where the kids could grow up into an adult um, board member positions. They would learn how to do that. They would learn how to organize themselves, bring this event, you know, an annual thing that didn't have an end date, you know? Um, and so that was the overall intent and wanted to present it with that in mind to councils for consideration and the renaming. Um, honor Katie, honor the Rotary Park, and honor a bit of a legacy for, for the community and, and build an event, you know, that kids can come together and have some free hot dogs and some fruitopia and, uh, and just, you know, have something to do rain or shine on August 20th. So that's a, a quick proposal. I provided uh, more information that gives a little more detail and some images, um, as well as uh, the eulogy to sort of capture what Katie was all about and uh, the letter of support has been shared. So I wanna thank you for that consideration. And uh, I hope on August 20th, you'll come out for some hot dogs and be able to celebrate and rename. There was uh, a part of the Rotary that said that they wanted to ensure that the name was there. And by all means, the family is in full support of keeping it. That's why we called it Katie June's Be Yourself Rotary Park, um, because it's also important to keep that recognition there. And put up some new signage and would like to work with you to ensure we're compliant to any bylaws or any considerations that you may have. So thank you. Thank you very much. So one of the options we have today is to have staff bring back uh, information on memorial dedication policy. And so this is uh, the first time we have heard of this. So I'm going to ask that we defer this um, till after the um, Staff has brought back a uh, memorial dedication policy. Do you need a motion for that, Tim? Yes, please. Councillor Gerwing. Uh, can, can we have a timeline associated with it, please? Uh, Ms. McIver, do you know how long that will take? I would say give us two meetings, so now that we're back into the swing of meetings. <laughs> um, yeah, so I'd say November meeting would be good. Very well, thank you. Moved by Councillor Penny, seconded by Councillor Gerwing. All those in favor? Carried. Thank you. And thank you very much for that. Um, you know, I think a lot of people in our communities have been touched by the loss of a child. And I know some very young families that this has affected. And I know how devastating that can be. As a matter of fact, in my own family, I lost my brother when I was seven years old and he was 12. So I know what kind of devastation that does to a family and how that doesn't go away. So I appreciate you bringing that forward. <clears throat> Business arising. Um, Ratify the museum roofing project that the Fort Nelson Historical Society be allocated $146,000 from the Northern Rockies Regional Municipality uh, unappropriated surplus to fund the metal shake roof option requested as part of the Fort Nelson Museum expansion. Can I get a motion, please? Moved by Councillor Andrews. Seconded by Councillor Roper. All those in favor? Carried. Any opposed? Very well. And to ratify the waiver of damage deposit for Elections Canada, that the deposit be waived and the fee of $750 be collected following the rental of the community hall to Elections Canada for the 2021 federal election taking place September 20th, 2021. Can I get a motion please to ratify that resolution moved by Councillor Penny, seconded by Councillor Gerwing. All those in favor? Carried unanimously, thank you. Administration report uh, number 59, Animal Rescue. Ms. Shepherd.
Good evening, Mayor and Council. So the report you have tonight uh, provides details on the animal control and pound keeping contracts. You'll remember that this report was triggered or this information was triggered when Takashi's Animal Rescue announced their pending closure back in the beginning of the year. Um, over the spring, there was some work undertaking, undertaken with animal service related providers to sort of look at challenges and strategize solutions. And then over the past few months, we've done some internal work to address those challenges, including amendments to the animal control contract, um, some administrative procedure changes to sort of review and tweak um, to address deficiencies, and then promote some public education of the animal control bylaw. Externally, um, Fort Nelson has welcomed a second, second veterinarian clinic. So they've been providing services that have complemented the traveling vet. And then the SPCA has um, continued to commit to providing support to Fort Nelson. They have not had a confirmed or formal re um, response yet. They cited uh, some capacity challenges with wildfire season. Um, so the options uh, are outlined there for discussion, including some increase to service levels in the pound keeping or animal control contracts, or increasing methods to how we lodge animal control complaints, or changing the service area, um, increasing the availability of dispatch. Etc. for discussion. Thank you. Councillor Penny. I just wanted to ask, when I was reading this, um, it mentioned that we, we've never gone over at the pound, right? They've, we've never had extra days. But do we have any idea how much the utilization of the pound is currently? Like, it says that it, it wasn't going over, but it, it didn't say how many there. So, um, so since the closure of Takashi's, I don't have the report with me right now, but there has been like one or two per month, I'm thinking, is that right, James? If my memory serves me correctly. One or two animals impounded per month. They have not gone over the 72 hour um, impounding, but that's an increase from prior to our <laughs> education on the animal control bylaw. Thank you. So less than 72 hours, approximately 72 hours per month of keeping a dog at the pound. Yeah, Would that be a fair let's say that's a average? fair average probably. If you've got one animal impounded per month, it would be up to 72 hours. I think sometimes maybe an animal is collected and right away returned to its owner. Because we haven't had any animals impounded longer than the 72 hours at this point, it would be fair to say that every animal that's impounded has had an owner which has come to collect. Any other comments, councillors? Councillor Gerwing. Well, I think um, staff is looking for some direction um, because this is an issue near and dear to my heart. And I think um, that we're paying um, a considerable amount of money um, for a service that I myself don't find to be very usable um, or very helpful when I've found myself in a few unfortunate situations. Um, so really when I read the options, um, I, I think I, I, I'm comfortable making a motion for staff to investigate all of those options. Okay, are there any other comments, councillors? I agree with Councillor Gerwing. I think, uh, you know, I've heard many complaints about, um, about the, um, the complaint process of animals. I see that we're spending, you know, a fair amount of money on animal control, and I don't know that it's delivering what, what we would hope for. Um, now that we have a vet available here, I think this is, uh, this is something that maybe we can look at working with the veterinarian and trying to find some way to streamline this so that animals are picked up properly and that they're taken care of. And then we get maybe a, a little better uh, utilization of the money that we're spending for animal control in the community. And it's not spread out so much with pound keeping, and animal control and 
et cetera, et cetera. So um, a seconder for Councillor Gerwing's motion, seconded by Councillor Penny. All those in favor, carried. Thank you. Thank you. Administration report number 60, proposed addition to reserve Prophet River. Ms. Thompson. Good evening, Mayor and Council. So I have in front of you a report uh, for information, which is uh, related to the proposed addition to reserve for Prophet River First Nation. Um, on September the 7th, uh, sorry, uh, September the 14th, uh, we received a letter from Indigenous Services Canada, which is in attachment one, that advised that Prophet River First Nation uh, has requested an area of land be added to their existing uh, reserve. Um, there's information in attachment number one and number two, which shows the area uh, proposed for addition, as well as the letter. Um, Indigenous Services and Services Canada has requested that all technical comments be submitted prior to December the 14th and uh, Northern Rockies Regional Municipality has an opportunity to provide any comments should they wish to. Essentially, uh, the current Indian Reserve is approximately 380 hectares and Prophet River is proposing to add three district lots um, for an additional area of 371.7 hectares. The ATR area or the addition to reserve area, um, like I said, are three district lots, um, which are currently fee simple and they are owned uh, by a numbered company registered to Prophet River First Nation or being held in trust on behalf of Prophet River First Nation. Um, a review of the uh, three district lots was completed and essentially uh, minimal interest as they, it is private land. Um, there is uh, of note, there is a uh, an closed landfill site that's uh, existing in the northeast corner of one of the district lots. Um, and we're currently working with, uh, um, sorry, with uh, Federal Public Works to determine the jurisdiction of that uh, closed landfill area as there may be additional work that needs to be completed in there. Um, an additional analysis of the, uh, the implications to tax revenue was undertaken and the three district lots total a uh, total tax of $941 per year. And that's it. Councilor Gerwing. Um, can, do you have any more information on that landfill? Would, would the municipality be responsible for any cleanup that might, could be required? Good question, we don't know. So the landfill was closed in the late 1980s and uh, we just received information from Ministry of Environment from their archives. Um, it's a little ambiguous just because of at that time, you know, we split from the Peace Regional District. Um, so it appears that, you know, essentially once that split occurred, it is in our geographic jurisdiction. Um, but it is officially closed from the government's perspective. So um, I think there's more dialogue, you know, with um, federal public works just to figure out kind of next steps with Prophet River. So Prophet River First Nation initially had a conversation with federal public works regarding the closed landfill. So now uh, if we feel it's within our jurisdiction and our responsibility, we'll assume those conversations with Prophet River. Any other questions? Very well, I'll uh, make the motion then that um, that we support the proposed addition to the reserve. We have a seconder, seconded by Councillor Souls. All those in favor? Carried. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, don't move. <laughs> <laughs> Deactivation of EOG, admin report number 61, uh, Canada Roads. Me again. Um, so this one, uh, this report is for information as well. Um, it's to just advise uh, Mayor and Council of an opportunity again to provide any comments uh, Council may wish to um, regarding the future or planned deactivation of four roads currently tenured to EOG Canada Oil and Gas Incorporated. Um, Ridgeline Environment on behalf of the EOG is seeking comments from the public regarding use of these four roads, which are located in the vicinity of Highway 77. Um, and there is uh, attachments one and two 
uh, depict where the, the roads are located. <clears throat> Excuse me. So a review was performed uh, internally on some of the interest in that area in those areas. Um, and basically the tattoo area road, uh, 6.2 kilometers of the first uh, section of road is within the community forest agreement area. Uh, the CFA board were notified and EOG has been in contact with the CFA board as well. And uh, through correspondence with the Snowmobile Club and Ministry of Forests and Lands locally, um, we're aware that there's likely uh, some interest from off-road vehicle users uh, in on the Max Hanush Lake area road. So based on our review and uh, comments uh, from Flynn Nord and from uh, the Snowmobile Club, the following comments were provided to Ridgeline Environment for their consideration so far. Uh, the Max Hamish Lake area, um, just notice that a cabin does exist in that area, uh, likely associated with Port Nelson First Nation or Echo Danny Co First Nation. Um, the Max Hamish Lake area is likely used uh, by off-road uh, off re recreational vehicles. And a recommendation uh, that a referral is sent to the local Ministry of Forests and Lands Office. Um, did, it was my understanding that they had sent one largely to Flinord in general, but not to the local office. Um, recommended that consultation with the appropriate First Nations, again, specifically, likely uh, Fort Nelson First Nation and Echo Dene Co is undertaken before the roads are deactivated. And then a request uh, was made that once EOG has determined the level of deactivation um, on those roads, that Northern Rockies is notified prior to the commencement of work. Thank you. Are there any questions from Ms. Thompson? <clears throat> Councillor Souls. I, uh, <clears throat> I know that some of the roads actually are, it's always uh, beneficial when you see a forest industry come back to life and you actually have some roads to work with already. I get it that there's uh, two of these roads that don't have a whole lot of for, uh, forest potential on them, but some of the others do. And so I think it's a, it would be wise to ensure that the proponents that are looking at um, setting up a forest industry in our community get to take a look at this before there's a decision made on deactivation. Thank you. Any more comments? Very well. Thank you. Um, admin report number 62, BC Caribou Recovery Program for information. Ms. Thompson, again. Um, that's not me. Oh, I've got it down as Lisa Thompson on this. Sorry, Gabrielle, please. Hello, Mayor and Council. Uh, before you is a four information report regarding the BC Caribou Recovery Program. Uh, currently, the BC uh, Caribou Recovery Program is seeking input from stakeholders on a five-year approval for continued predator reduction to support the recovery of caribou across the province. As such, an online uh, portal has been established for stakeholders to access both engagement materials and to provide comments. Uh, the online feedback form will be open uh, between September 15th and November 15th of uh, 2021. You'll see in the attachment, the attached map, um, it illustrates which caribou herds are candidates for predator reduction. And you'll notice that within the NRM's boundaries, the Boreal and Northern Mountain caribou herds are care, uh, sorry, candidates for continued wolf reduction. And again, uh, these two uh, caribou herds, they are uh, located within our boundaries. So that being said, uh, should regional council wish to provide comments at this time, uh, feedback uh, will be provided both to the statutory decision maker uh, for consideration, as well as uh, help uh, inform the province's decision-making process. Are there any comments, any questions from Ms. Jacobs? Councillor Andrews. Um, has this feedback link been put on our Facebook page or anything? No, not that I'm aware of at this time. Could we, Council? I'd like to recommend that. 
make a motion to have the um, feedback link on our Facebook page. For Moved by Councillor Andrews, seconded by Councillor Penny. All those in favor? Carried. Thank you, Councillor Andrews. Any other comments? Councillor Gurry. Um, well, I think the municipality should provide comments, but I don't know what they would be because I'm not educated enough in this issue, but I'm sure we have people that are. Um, so I would like to see the municipality provide um, comments um, in favor of this uh, predator management course of action they are. So I think we could just simply make a motion that staff um, comment on this in favor of the, of the predator reduction. I think that would be sufficient to capture the idea. Um, if I may, Mayor. Go ahead. Uh, because I haven't looked at exactly what all the plan entails, I don't know that, like, that we're in favor, but perhaps we need to have a bit more investigation and then make comment on it. Very well. Councillor Souls. I think there's been a fairly <clears throat> long and consistent trail uh, with our uh, trappers associations, the hunting hunt guide outfitter associations and the packer associations. And that that is a recommended that is a recommended process for this problem at this time. So I think that we don't have to invent anything in order to come up with a, a response as a municipality. I think we have to just lend our support to what's already being being well documented in the world of the uh, on land users. Can I just respond? Go ahead, Councillor Gerwin. Uh, agreed, Councillor Sosa. It's just that I didn't look into the plan to see if the Trappers Associations and the First Nations approve what this plan actually says. So that was my point around that. Councillor Penny. <laughs> my point was covered fairly well by Councillor Gerwing, but yes, uh, with that, I, I think anybody that knows much about it at all is in favor of, of use, but it's just my concern is, is not seeing lines where possibly there should be lines. So yeah, I'd want to make sure that we get it right. So um, councillors, so what are we instructing staff to do then? Do we want them to investigate more detail around what that plan looks like? Is that Councilor Gerwing? Uh, well, I guess I would make a motion um, to have um, some sort of a response from the municipality um, in conjunction with research undertaken to um, check with the stakeholders involved, the, the local trappers associations, the local First Nations to ensure that the plan that is um, been formulated for predator reduction as if they support it or not, and then make our comments accordingly. Councillor Penny, you're seconding that motion? Very well. Are there any comments on the motion? Very well. All those in favor? Carried unanimously. Mr. Berry, does that capture pretty well? Just gonna check. Um, Jay, you good with the motion that's if we if we if we it's recorded <laughs> world's longest motion and i think some some summary basic yeah, actually actually you have yes um i think to summarize it you said stakeholders and, and you outline what those stakeholders are so if there's any flags in the play we'll bring something back to council otherwise we'll submit something uh, after we engage with the stakeholders to confirm that the uh, process is supported okay excellent um Thank you, Ms. Jacobs. Um, moving on to administration report number 63. Um, we have, uh, we don't have Mr. Dominic here. He's on the- uh, Oh, there he is. Mr. Dominic, Roadworks Projects, admin report number 63. Go ahead. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, the report in front of you is for information regarding the 2021 Roadworks Projects. Um, as you may know, they were awarded in uh, May of 2021 to Terrace Construction or DGS Astro, and they include asphalt patching, road overlays, and road reconstruction. And uh, DGS, unfortunately, on September 13th, uh, 2021, informed the uh, NRM they would be unable to secure materials for the projects in our municipality this year and requested that the roadworks contract be extended into next year. 
Uh, the NRM was unable to secure a roadworks contract in 2020, which makes this the second year in a row the roadworks will not be carried out. Staff is currently exploring options to mitigate uh, similar issues like this in the future and will provide a report for regional council's consideration uh, later on this fall. Thank you. Are there any questions from Mr. Domic? Councillor Souls, uh, <clears throat> is it gravel that we don't have? Is it the right type of gravel that we're missing? No, it's actually the uh, inability for the uh, DGS to procure the uh, asphalt that is needed for the project. Councillor Andrews. Um, were there any expenses incurred for these um, projects already? like surveying or anything like that? What happens with stuff like that? Basically, there has been um, expenses such as the um, surveying and uh, there are some engineering costs as well. Uh, they uh, were budgeted for this year um, and we will be providing a um, admin report to you uh, later on this fall that lays out options uh, moving forward um, regarding these projects. Thank you. Uh, Councilor Gurring? So um, in the report, it says that DGS has requested that the roadworks contract be extended into the next year. Is that something we wanna do or do we wanna start fresh and maybe try to um, get um, someone else to bid on it? Mr. Barry. So you'll notice that your in-camera package actually has uh, an item specific to this also. So we'll, uh, there's certain things that we'll discuss in camera, which wouldn't be appropriate in here. And we can answer some of those questions or discuss that in, in camera view, uh, Councillor Gerling. Are there any other questions from Mr. Dominic? Thank you very much for that report. Correspondence, letter from UBCM, Canada Community Building Fund, BC, the gas tax fund. And we're in receipt, I think, of $282,000 and change. Always nice. Any comments on that? Very well. Letter from Dan Davies, MLA, Peace River North, power outages in the Northern Rockies. Correspondence to Minister Bruce Ralston, copied to the municipality. Are there any comments on that? Very well. Letter from Jim Standen. Assistant Deputy Minister, BC Parks and Conservation, opening of Montreal Lake Provincial Park. Any comments? Very well. Um, letter from Jim Standen, Assistant Deputy Minister, BC Parks and Conservation, Nanda Tower Road Bridge. Any comments? Very well. Letter from uh, City of Dawson Creek and Fort St. John. Joint session of elected leaders in Northeast BC. A uh, little update on that. Uh, I've been informed that that will take place on October the 15th and I will be attending. We don't know the exact location of that at the moment. A uh, letter from the Minister of Children and Family Development, Sri October, is declared uh, Foster Family Month. Information packages, council information package from August 11th, council information package from August 18th, council information package August 25th, September 1st, September 8th, September 15th, and September 22nd. Received for information. New business items. Grace Matter, Councillor Andrews, backup power generation. Um, it was mentioned to me that when our, whenever we have these extended power outages, that Grace Manor doesn't have any source for backup power. They've got family members coming in trying to bring in generators to help them out for their medical equipment and stuff. And then um, a few meetings back, we were looking at what we're doing with this facility as it is. I just would like to keep it in mind if we can lend a hand while we're redoing electrical or anything like that here to try to help out Grace Manor where we can possibly have a have them connected to our backup generator or just 
you know, see where we can help. Okay, thank you. I think our backup generator, if I'm not mistaken, is about at capacity, if not the fact that we've got um, too much need and not enough generator, but at some point, if we increase the size of the generator, or we might look for things that we could assist Grace Manor with, if they um, sought some funding, maybe so that they could get a generator, maybe we could uh, do something with, uh, with the buildings. Is there any other comments on Grace Manor and the generators? Councilor Gerwing. Yeah, in the meantime, I wonder if we can liaison with, um, I think it's Tannis Mold over there now. Um, I'm just worried about this winter. Um, like I, I understand and appreciate Councillor um, Andrew's comments about looking to the future, but um, from what I'm worried about is, you know, I don't know that our reality this winter is gonna be much different um, given the letter that we got back from BC Hydro. Um, and given that we just had a power outage, but we were lucky enough to have one person here, but then we had tree cutting people for BC Hydro that were able to step in without those people would, would have been a much longer power outage once again. Um, so I don't know, Can I, I would be willing to make a motion that staff um, liaison with um, the administration of Grace Manor, perhaps in, to find some sort of workable solution. I'm trying to be concise in my words, Mr. Berry. Um, some kind of workable solution around power generation during outages. Mr. Berry, did you? Are you looking to try to have something in place by this winter? Because that would require um, purchasing most likely because so if, 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 if that's what, just looking at the scope in terms of what council is actually looking for at this point. Um, so just from your comments, Councillor Andrews, um, the intent would be to, as part of the rental of the facility would be to keep in mind opportunities to work with uh, the stakeholder of obviously being Grace Manor to look at those opportunities and bring information back to council to increase capacity if there's a new generator, whatever that might look like. But um, just in terms of the your, uh, motion, Councilor Growing, just wondering, so we're looking at um, a solution that would require probably including the purchase or acquisition, I guess, of a of something, because we don't, the, the, as, as the mayor had mentioned, this existing generator doesn't mm. have any uh, pre-board to um, provide much more. We were right. hoping to probably get the lights on in here and the lights maybe in the right room to operate our EOC, but that's it, that's the extent of what the, the existing one has. Right. That's also um, just wondering to what extent, uh, but we can, we'll okay. certainly have the conversation. I just wasn't sure if there's anything else in terms of expectation. No, that sort I'm of actually looking for um, solutions for this winter in case, well, fingers crossed, we don't have any more power outages, but what if we do? And I don't necessarily have a solution except for Perhaps Krista can help them with grant opportunities, or perhaps we have a budget to purchase um, a generator or a company that's willing to sponsor it. Like, I don't know if we can just liaison with them to they're doing fundraising right now. I don't know what it's for, but um, yeah, I just I, would like I, to see that. I guess one of my concerns is the scope of, of what that generator would do, because when we talk about the generator for the municipality here that runs our IT and can barely turn the lights on in either the Raven room or this room, that generator costs about $20,000, everything, everything included. So I'm wondering what the scope of what they would need at Grace Manor and, and the fact that the facility is a provincial facility, I totally support looking into what we can do to help them uh, uh, achieve some grants and everything. Um, and and uh, as Councillor Andrews had said, anything we can do when we're redoing this facility, of course, we'd like to help them out. Um, but I, I guess when we come up with $20,000 or whatever their figure is, or, or, you know, I think we'd have to find out what they're looking for. So, Mayor, I just had a motion on the floor to investigate. Um solutions uh, for this winter, uh, working with um, the management over at Grace Manor. So 
I didn't have a motion for twenty thousand dollars no. or anything like that. It was simply a motion mm -hmm. to uh, work with the management at Grace Manor to see if we can assist in solving this problem over the course of the winter in the event of any other power outages. That was the motion. Very well. Then I'm going to ask for a seconder for that motion, seconded by Councillor Andrews. All those in favor? Carried. <clears throat> I have no additions, uh, no councillor additions. Uh, Mr. Barry, locum housing. Oh, I'm sorry, Ms. McIver. Thank you. Um, so just a quick update for, for council. Um, the four E's are able to return to the community. So Dr. Chris Curry and his wife, Mariana. So they were successful in getting their visas and they'll be back um, October to December of this year and then are planning to return again June, July and August, I think it is of next year. So um, additionally, Dr. Sugman, who's been here a few times for shorter stints, but has provided pretty reliable locum coverage for our docs is also coming back in October. So we have a bit of an overlap there. Um, but I guess um, why I'm kind of bringing this to your attention is we've, as council will recall in January, we brought a report to you to look at uh, ongoing commitment to lease an apartment for locums. And um, at that point, council passed a resolution for month to month, uh, a month to month lease. So we've been doing that, but since then um, we've received some feedback on the particular unit that we've rented that um, it's not entirely suitable for uh, positions just in location and things like that. So knowing that the freeze are coming for a more extended period of time for, for potentially two long stints and then in between that we'll, we can expect some other locums um, in kind of the freeze off season. Um, we'd like to get council's um, support to enter into a different lease. This one's a long-term lease. It's near the clinic and grocery store. It is slightly higher per month, um, but it also comes furnished and it's all inclusive for utilities. So what that means in terms of this year, because we are in October, it's a difference of $1,300 in rent for the remainder of the year from what we have been paying. And then um, there are some furnishings that aren't provided with this unit that we would have to get it set up with in anticipation of their arrival. So mostly just consumables, um, like small appliances and linens and things like that. So we'd need a small budget for that. So we took a look at the hospital district budget. We do have some surplus funds there um, in the housing section of the budget and um, that can accommodate that, uh, that allocation of costs. So, we're hoping for kind of two parts, one being uh, approval to enter into a year lease for this unit, and then also um, allocation of $4,300 from the hospital district budget to basically um, make up for the rent and supplies. Very well, I'll uh, make the motion that we approve the lease, the one year lease. Can I get a seconder please? Seconded by Councillor Penny. All those in favor? Carried. And a motion of $4,300 from the hospital housing fund. I'll make that motion. Seconded by Councillor Roper. All those in favor? Carried, thank you. Any council reports? Councillor Gerwing. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Um, so I continue to attend the monthly NCLG healthcare committee meetings. Um, this month it was in September the 2nd. The healthcare survey report that I've been talking about for so long will finally be publicly released very soon. Um, every member will receive a copy as well. A copy will be sent to the ministers of health and mental health and addictions, the CA CEOs and board chairs of Northern Health and Interior Health all area MLAs and MPs. I attended the Municipal Insurance Association AGM um, on September 13th. Um, September 14th, I attended the Community Health Plan meeting. Diane Penny gave an update on the three positions she currently holds, all supporting physicians and the work they do. 
There have been great strides made with having this resource now available to our doctors and hopefully we will one day become a division of family practice which will open up a host of uh, other supports our doctors currently do not have access to including project funding dollars. Hopefully more on this soon. Um, the health unit and hospital reported that they have hired another new nurse, a GI manager, which is, I don't know what that, diagnostic imaging, and, uh, and a tech one position have all been filled. They're still working on a lab position and one more LPN position. BC Emergency Services um, had eight new positions posted and at the meeting, um, oh, so the post, it was posted and then closed. And um, I believe there are six confirmed hires. Our new community paramedic has left the community for another posting. So that position is open again. And there is a harm reduction van up and running in our community. Um, I attended the community health summit on September 14th, facilitated by Doug Blackie. This was to be an in-person event um, designed to present the health advocate priorities to the community. Unfortunately, it had to be changed to virtual, uh, but input from those attending was very robust and um, Doug will be providing a report to council soon. I attended the Chamber of Commerce board meeting September 16th um, and to report the board, that board is embarking on board training. And uh, of note, the Chamber awards have been moved from October of this year to February of 2022. And there will be some new hires taking place at the chamber. Uh, September 18th, I attended the fun run. Once again, it was a great event with 55 people registered um, in addition to the kids races. Um, so it, like, again, it, it was just a great fun event as always. I attended the library board meeting on September 20th and um, just released uh, the NCLGA AGM has been set for May 4th to the 6th of 2022 in Fort St. John. Thank you. Any other reports? Very well. Um, are there any virtual attendees who have any questions? Very well. I'll ask for a resolution to move to a closed meeting under section 91J and 91K of the community charter. Moved by Councillor Andrews, seconded by Councillor Penny. All those in favor? Carried. That's all right. Very well, I'll call this regular council meeting back to order and I'll ask for a motion uh, to adjourn the meeting or to rise and report. Um, okay. I'll rise and report on behalf of council. So from the uh, in-camera personnel meeting of this evening, uh, Councillor Penny, seconded by Councillor Roper, that the NRM observe the National Day of Truth and Reconciliation on September 30th, 2021. Carried. Um, opposed, Councillor Souls. And the second resolution was moved by Councillor Andrew, seconded by Councillor Penny, an observance of the day for truth and reconciliation that the rec center be operated at a reduced schedule offering free swimming and skating on September 30th, 2021. Carried. Thank you. And I will ask for a motion to adjourn the regular council meeting. Moved by Councillor Andrews, seconded by Councillor Souls. All those in favor? We are adjourned. Bye, guys. Uh, See ya.